Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this. We are going to start with the second video of uh, Vectors, Chapter 1. Uh, so the first video, we talk about units, and the second video, we'll need to talk about the issue of scalar and vector quantities. Because as we are well informed, physical quantities can be split into scalar quantities and vector quantities. And the reason why this matters is because the way we treat scalar and the way we treat vectors are very different. Now, the way we treat scalars, right, is pretty straightforward. We just add them up or minus. Okay, so for example, if I buy durian and I want to know how much is my total amount of durian, I just add up the mass. I don't really care about the direction of the durian, so to speak, which is why scalar quantity is a physical quantity with only magnitude and no direction. Excuse me here, I need to drink water. So the examples are listed below. temperature, energy, mass, and time. But the way we treat vectors have to be very different because vector is a physical quantity with both magnitude and direction. Wow, got magnitude and then got direction some more. Example, that would be force, velocity, acceleration, etc, etc, momentum. Okay, so the reason why we talk about um, all of this, right, is you think about it, right, the direction matters. The direction of force matters. Where you pull an object, of course it matters. The, veloc the direction of velocity matters because which direction you are you moving, <laughs> that matters too, right? So when we represent this vector, obviously since there's a direction, we represent it with the most straightforward thing, which is an arrow. Okay, an arrow. So when it comes to this arrow, Normally, the length of the arrow would represent the magnitude of the vector. So, for example, if this vector is like 2 newton, maybe we want to draw 2 cm, it can be 20 cm. The scale is up to you, but the length is used to represent the magnitude. And since it has both magnitude and direction, when we represent or when we talk about the direction, we usually in A-levels measure A-levels physics, measure it from the horizontal axis or measure it from another force that is in the diagram relative to another force. But let's say we take theta as a direction from the horizontal. But in maths, we don't always draw diagram. Ah. We use unit vectors. So this is useful for you if you do more maths later when we represent vectors. Let's say, for example, this is vector A. We can call it PI plus QJ where P and Q are constants for you to find. So if you do additional mathematics, I think you know this already. Or let's say we call this vector OA, we can call this PI plus QJ. Alright, so I'm, not, I'm going to leave the I, J and K to your mathematics lecturer and just focus on drawing arrows. Yay, physics! Okay, so we're going to look at how we are going to add vectors. I will talk about three different ways. So before we talk about the different ways, let's talk about the simple one first. Uh, let's say you have a box and you pull 3 newton to the right and you pull 5 newton to the left. So you notice uh, that because the 5 newton and the 3 newton is opposite direction, then this 5 must have a negative. In physics, right, the negative is directional. Understand? So you have to understand whenever we write a negative in physics, right, it means something. Okay? So what it means uh, really depends on the context context matters guys so this negative doesn't mean that the phi newton owes anyone anything not the traditional negative way of looking at maths or number lines this is just directional so since they're in opposite direction to find the resultant force i will just uh take f1 minus F2. Ah. But you see, because it's resultant, ah, so it's actually F1 plus F2. It's just that I plus a negative number, lah, so the result is negative 2. Now what happens if they're in the same direction and parallel? Then your F1 plus F2 will be 3 plus 5, 8 newton. Wow, this one, very straightforward. Sleep also can do. But you see, ah, when the vectors are in opposite direction, you minus same direction, you plus. No problem. But what happens when the vector is not parallel? Not parallel, very headache. Eh? Okay. So for parallel vectors, okay, you got no problem. I want to type no problem. Alright. You just directly add or subtract the magnitudes. So the biggest value of F1 plus F2 can be, it will be 8 and the smallest one will be 2. As far as we know, lah, based on this. But what happens oh, when the vectors are not parallel? For example, you have a vector pointing downwards. Let's say the 5 newton, I change direction. Oh, I point it downwards. And then the 3 newton, 
I keep it in the same direction. I will try to keep the 3 newton in the same direction for this example so that you are not that confused. Lah. Okay, so we pull downwards by 5 newton. We pull to the right by 3 newton. So where is the resultant? Let's think a bit. There are a few methods to do this for non-parallel vectors. Uh, and I think your intuition will tell you that the result will pull somewhere in the lower left, sorry, lower right hand side corner. So there are a few methods. First method, we can use the parallelogram of forces to see that lower right hand corner direction. Okay, lower right hand corner, this direction. Okay, so I will build a parallelogram which coincidentally looks like a rectangle because all rectangles are parallelograms, but not all parallelograms are rectangle. Okay, I'll let you think about it. Okay, so when you join the vertice to the other end, you will get the resultant, which is the middle arrow. Note that all three arrows originate from the same point, okay? So this one, I will draw a double arrow, and this will be F1 plus F2. This is the resultant, the one in the center. And since this one is 90 degree, uh, to find the magnitude of F1 and F2 is pretty easy, okay? All right? So the method two is to do triangle of forces because I think you see a right angle triangle. You must, you should be thinking about what I'm thinking right now because um, if you think about the triangle of forces, what will happen is, uh, so now I'm just going to show you how you can do this in your one note. Uh, you can see I copy the diagram. Ah, and then I copy paste. So when I copy a diagram by using the lasso tool, L-A-S-S-O, and then I paste it here, okay? So what will happen now is I want to form a right angle triangle. Meaning what I will do is I'll move the phi newton to reach this side. Okay, this will be another vector diagram. So you can draw the parallelogram of forces or you can draw a vector triangle. Meaning this phi newton I move here. So you will get 3 newton plus phi newton is F1 plus F2. 3 plus 5 is F1 plus F2. Look at the arrow. Okay, different part ways. But you can see uh, actually F1 plus F2 is the same thing. Okay, they are the same sort of diagram. So your two methods will be either draw a parallelogram or triangle. And then you draw scale diagrams. So when I say scale diagrams, I mean you take a ruler and you measure out maybe 6 cm for 3 newton and 10 cm for 5 newton. And then you write the scale law once uh, 1 cm is to 0 0.5 newton. Example. Okay, and then you use the protractor to measure your theta. And then you are like, miss ah. I am in A-level now. Can I use equation? Can. Of course you can. But you have to follow the questions. There are certain parts here questions that insist you draw a scale diagram because it's testing a skill. So if you use, if you don't follow their method, then you don't get marks. Lah, all right? Or you'll be penalized for that. Okay, so this one, F1 plus F2, uh, yeah, you use our friend Pythagoras, 5.83 Newton. Final answer. Okay? So the final answer in, in physics... Uh, no cert, no fractions, uh, write 2 or 3 SF. Please do not write cert, I will minus one mark. Okay, because I cannot check your SF, significant figures. Okay, so we can find theta using tangent, opposite, um, yeah, opposite over side, or adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So 5 divided by 3, this is 59 degree below the horizontal. Below the positive horizontal will be more accurate. Okay, so this is method one, method two. But this is generally not a very physics method lah, because it's reliant on you drawing a correct diagram. Sometimes the diagram is suitable if you can draw it quick and you know what you're doing. But if not right, the gold star standard is to resolve factors. It's okay to not know how to draw a diagram, but it is not okay to not know how to resolve factors. Okay, I repeat, ah, it's not okay to not know what to do in method three. Again, they will dictate your method, so it's best if you know all the methods. So right now, I'm going to uh, change the direction of the phi newton slightly. Nine, it's not 90, it's not parallel, it's not 180, it's not zero. Okay, so right now it's going to be 120 degrees, lah, which I will label shortly. So you see here, right now I'm just copying the diagram just so that you can see the different methods and you can compare them, okay? And then practice. So right now, your this vector diagram hall, what I will do for the first one on your left, on the left side, would be to draw or build a parallelogram. Okay, so we all already once again know that the 
the block is still going to travel roughly towards the lower right hand corner. Of course, my parallelogram is not going to look very nice when you use a computer. In the exam, you can build a better one using your protractor and your ruler. Okay, so this would be your resultant vector, the green one. This would be F1 plus F2. And once again, just as a reminder, F is 3. And the other F2 is 5. Okay, so of course the green arrow is not 8. Lah, huh? So this is the parallelogram. You can use this parallelogram and then uh, try to measure using a ruler. Or you can draw a triangle, second rate, the diagram method. So move the phi newton here and slightly cheat a bit and adjust the angle. Ha ha. Okay, so here you can see this triangle and then you're like, miss ah, but ho, that one is 120. Right, so this one is 60. I don't know what to do. Well, then you draw a scale diagram. No? Scale diagram, indicate the scale that you use, show the working carefully. I will show this in class. Lah, all right, if you need an next demo, just let me know. Okay, so then you, or if you don't use scale draw drawing and measure the length, oh, then what you can do is you can use the cosine rule. Lah. You, ingat the, you remember the cosine rule. Lah. A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cos theta. Alright, of course, this one we seldom see, but it is not wrong. People just tend to forget this method. Lah. Okay, so um, just as a recap, I want to find the length of this green arrow. The length of the green arrow is opposite 60. So meaning this is A, the length A, the angle of 60 is the angle A. So the rest will be B and C. Okay, uh, identifying the angles. Or go revise your maths. Alright, so substituting the values and then pressing my calculator, I'll get 4.36 Newton. Okay, scale drawing is always acceptable unless they say you cannot. But miss, what is the gold star method resolve? This is generally what we will do most in physics whenever we have non-parallel vectors that we need to, we need to deal with. So first order of business, anything that is non-parallel, we make them parallel. Ah, so we will split the phi newton into one horizontal component and one vertical component. Now consider this phi newton. This phi newton is pointing downwards. So confirm there will be a vector pointing downwards. And this phi newton is pointing to the left. So confirm there will be a vector pointing to the left. Make sense? Okay, so this is going down and left, so there'll be a downward arrow, and then there'll be a leftward arrow. Right, so I'm just trying to build right now the parallelogram or the rectangle that you saw in the previous example, just to familiarize yourself with the drawing, okay? And um, this will be 30 degree because the other one is 90, and 30 plus 90 is 120. Just a reminder that the longer arrow is 5 and the shorter horizontal one is 3. Obviously not drawn to scale. So when we say resolve, right, I'm going to split the phi newton into two components. One is vertical, one is horizontal. Okay, so that they are parallel. And we know what to do when they are parallel. We can just plus and minus, like the simpler days. All right? So we're going to now split the 5. And since it is the similar diagram as the one that I briefly showed you just now, I'm just going to move the top uh, arrow so that is bottom here and I get my beautiful right angle triangle so I can find Fy which is the vertical component now so I will use uh, cos 30 all right so cos 30 here will be Fy divided by 5 so Fy is 5 cos 30 I'll move back the arrow I'm sorry uh, in exam you have to imagine moving this so sine 30 will be Fx okay the base of the triangle over 5 so fx will be 5 sine 30 there's a small shortcut over here that you can use okay so the shortcut that i'm talking about right is that whenever there is an angle like this vertical component has an angle the angle is cos because this vertical component is beside or adjacent to the 30 degree adjacent is cos ma and this one, this component here is not adjacent. Not adjacent means opposite law, opposite the 30 degree. That's why Fx is sine. All right, take some time to let that sink in. Okay, and then we shall continue. All right, 
So after I split into two components, we can now uh, simplify the diagram into the second variation. I have labeled them one and two respectively. Okay, so for the second variation, I have no problem with the three newtons, so I'm maintaining it in the same direction. It's the five newton that is very annoying. So because the five newton is very annoying, I'm going to split the five newton into vertical and horizontal, as I have already done. Okay, but you see, uh, the x component got two forces, right? And because the x component has two forces, which is three newton and 5 sine 30 in the opposite direction. So the summation of it uh, is 3 minus 5 sine 30. Uh. And then whenever I talk about sum, I will use sigma. La. So 3 minus 5 sine 30, which is 0 0.5. And the lower one only got 1, uh, which is uh, Fy, 0 point, uh, sorry, Fy, which is 5 cos 30. So that's 4.33. So right now you can find the resultant. Uh. And if you look at this resultant, the direction of this resultant looks like the direction of F1 plus F2 on the left. See or not? You arrive at the same iteration. Okay, and if it's right angle, everyone breathes a sigh of relief. No one needs to use the cosine rule. Yay! We can use good old Pythagoras. Okay, anyway, we're going to also have to talk about theta. So to find theta using a triangle, if you don't draw a scale diagram and you measure using a protractor, you have to use the sine rule. Lah. But I'm just going to stick to my beautiful right angle triangle, okay? So resultant force here would be square root of 0 0.5 plus 4.33. Both terms will be squared. By the way, right, right angle triangle is one of your very close best friend in A-level physics. Alright, so you can see left and right, you get the same answer. It is a beautiful thing. Tangent theta here would be uh, opposite over adjacent. So 4.33 divided by 0 0.5. So you get your theta. Alright. And that would be 83 degree below the horizon. Okay, and uh, that's all for... The vector portion uh, you can skip on over to the example video regarding all these estimating things we will do it in person lah, in the face-to-face -face class session all right because this estimating thing i need to talk a bit more all right so that's all learn how to deal with vectors uh, the main idea here is there are physical quantities which is uh, vector and scalar and when it comes to vector, how we handle them is important because they have direction. So we much prefer perpendicular or parallel directions because we can use Pythagoras theorem or we know what to do. Alright, I'll see you in the example video where we'll discuss a few past years. Bye-bye.